Imagine when this was a wild river teeming with fish 400 years ago. The Wampanoags used those fish for food. In fact, the name Kunameset means place of the long fish in reference to American eel. And there are also large spring runs of herring. That all changed when the European settlers came and they began to block the river, building dams for grist mills. And then in the 1800s, some of those became woolen mills. In the late 1800s, the mills went elsewhere, but the land itself was converted to cranberry farming. And to grow cranberries, periodically, sand was layered on the surface. So after 100 years, more than two to three feet of sand had built up on that surface, making former wetlands to either side of the river an upland. Sand washed into the river, making it wide and shallow and warm. And it also made the fish much more vulnerable to ospreys, herring gulls, and other predators. So to bring the river back to a more natural state, the town of Falmouth began the Kunameset River Restoration Project, of which phase one was completed in May 2018. The dam was removed and replaced by the boardwalk at Dexter's Mill Crossing. The sand was stripped away, which exposed wetland soils that had been buried for hundreds of years. And the river channel was made much more windy. We've been measuring a lot of the responses of the river and the organisms, the animals and plants that are here um, in response to that restoration. I've been working a lot on the stream channel itself because I'm interested in what's happening with the fish in the system. And we've been monitoring the width of the river and the depth of the river and how much fish habitat there is. We monitor how many river herring they are and we also monitor their behavior in response to how the river was before and how their behavior has changed. One of the studies that I've been uh, directing on the Kunameset River is to study the plants that were there before and after the restoration. So before this was dug up and actively restored, we established 43 by 3 meter quadrats and we just recorded in these quadrats the uh, species of plants and the coverage of each plant. It's amazing the differences that we see. We took out one of the culverts. Now what happens is the fish just swim and they can just keep going, just like a natural river. So we've turned the stream channel into being a sort of V-shaped, deep, beautiful system with lots of bends in it. The river itself now has areas that are over three or four feet deep. This is giving them an area to go so they're not as vulnerable to predation by birds. We found the rocky bottom has come back. There's a lot of aquatic vegetation that serves to hide fish from predators, also provides a place where lots of insects can grow and provide fish food. We've really increased fish passage. All of this is because we've worked at bringing the system back to behaving like a natural river. One of the absolutely fascinating and sort of cool things about the restoration of wetlands onto these uh, retired bogs is that you don't really need to put seeds of native plants down. Wetland plants that used to be here created seeds, and many of those seeds are still viable. It's like a time capsule of seeds emerge after being buried for 300 years. Now we have this lush, beautiful wetland meadow that probably looks a lot like 400 years ago. So one of the interesting things that we found was that the species diversity post-restoration increased dramatically. And we went from something like about 80 species total to more than 130 species of plants. The plants also are shifting from uh, more upland-dominated species to wetland-dependent plant species. One of the things that was really important in the restoration was to make the river more accessible and more usable by people in the area. So the Kunameset River, from Dexter's Mill Crossing all the way to Kunameset Pond, lies entirely bordered by conservation land. Partnering with the 300 Committee, we're building a trail called the Kunameset Greenway Heritage Trail. You'll be able to walk from one end to the other. Along that trail, we'll also have interpretive signs where you can learn natural history and cultural history it's really been fun to teach the kids about herring, about wetlands, and also to show them an area 
where we can improve habitat to become more resilient to climate change. By the time we're done, more than a mile of river will have been restored from Dexter's Mill Crossing north to Pond 14. Recently, we held a celebration with Lieutenant Governor Polito and representatives from our many partners. This includes local and state and federal agencies, politicians, not-for-profits, volunteers, and private companies. Behind each of these logos are passionate people who work together to complete this amazing project. Thanks to them, we've already seen so many improvements in the first year and a half. It makes us really excited about the future of this river and what it will mean to our community now and in future generations. Thank you.